Here we're going to talk about exponential and logarithmic graphs, not just the functions themselves, but graphs of them. By the way, that's why I love this one when your barber knows the exponential growth formula. That's awesome. I love that here. Um, so if we have an exponential function, just to remind you uh, what that could look like, it could be like f of x equals some a to the power of x. That could be an exponential. Keep in mind that we have to keep uh, a has to be greater than zero. We're going to keep that right there, some positive number. So we can actually uh, do this in a graphing calculator. We can take a look at what happens there. I just want to show you what the diagrams are going to look like here. So I'm going to add a graph here. I'm actually going to say a to the power of x and see what happens. Now it's going to ask me for a slider. I say, yeah, I absolutely want that. So watch, I'm going to make it um, well greater than zero. Sure, that's a little bit boring. Let's make it, let's make it a equals two just to see what happens. Notice a equals 2. It crosses through this point. Now hopefully it makes sense when I make x 0. Anything to the power of 0 is 1. So you notice it's going to cross through 1 here. Um, and maybe I'll just do a diagram of that and I'll draw it. Okay, So I'll try to give a sketch of that one. So it'll go something like, something like that. And this will be 1. That'll be that point there. So this here, for example, that was, um, what was it? That was 2 to the x. All right, maybe I'll do it in blue so we can see them here. Now, what if I make it a little bit higher? What if I make it like a three to the X? Let's just see what happens then. What I like about this, you can just slide this and see what happens now. So as I slide it, do you notice though? So what happened then? Someone like this, it went a little bit steeper, didn't it? So from two to three, it looks like it goes steeper, it still passes through that same point there. So I'm gonna try to draw that. I'm going to try something, draw something a little bit steeper than that. So maybe I'll do it in a different color. Maybe I'll do it in green. And I'll say, all right, so it goes a little bit steeper. Maybe something like, oops, I'm actually just not very good at drawing. Something like, maybe like that. That might be 3 to the x, something like this. And maybe then if I want to do 4 to the x, it's going to do something similar, except uh, maybe even more so, like something like that, except it should go further on this other side here. Oh, something like that. That could be 4 to the x and so on. So you get the idea. There's something very special about these, right? So this is 4 to the x. There we go. So you can get the idea that, well, as I go along, I just play with these numbers here. Now, we have something else, the generic exponential function, because um, we have that one as well. That's actually just e to the x. So this looks very similar to what we've just done. Uh, in fact, what if I made this number right here? Let's just see which one of these matches it the best. I'm just going to try to draw this here. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do a diagram. I'm going to do uh, another tab here, and I'm going to draw on top of it e to the x, just to see what that looks like. That's my red one. Now what I'm going to try to do is mess around with my blue one. Do you notice I'm going to try to get my blue one to match the red one? I'm going to try to find out like what value matches it. Do you notice something like... 3 kind of works, 2 doesn't quite, turns out something kind of in the middle, something between sort of 1 and 2 and 3. In fact, 2 point something, in fact, works. What if I make it 2.72, roughly? Do you see they sort of match almost exactly, 2.72? Something kind of special about that. So I'm just going to show you that that right there would be the one that, that matches it the best, right? So if I make, now keep in mind, this is there's a reason for this, by the way. So this graph right here is going to look something, well, it's still going to pass through the point 1, just like the other one did. Okay, it's going to be like this. And this one here, maybe I'll make it a totally different color. Maybe I'll make it purple. And I'll go like this. And this is e to the x. But do you notice that what's e to the 1? e to the power of 1 is actually 2.72, roughly. I mean, it's with a lot of decimals. That's roughly what I get. Watch. Look, I'll do an extra page here. I'll do a calculator, and I'll do e to the power of 1. And look what I get. I get 2.72, roughly. That kind of tells me why they match. Right? They're matching because, you know, this one here, if I set this one here to be 2.72 to the x, that would actually be roughly what e is. So that's why it matches. See, this e is roughly 2.72. That's why between 2 to the x and 3 to the x, they match really well. Okay, if I make it 2.72 to the power of x, it'll really work because that's actually what e is. That's kind of neat, isn't it? Um, what I wanted to show you is, now this isn't, this isn't fully in the syllabus. You don't really need to learn this, but I think it is so awesome. 
Watch carefully what happens with my slider. Remember I kept saying a had to be greater than zero. What if I make a negative? Like just watch what's gonna happen here, okay? So I'm gonna play around with these numbers right here with a. And I can make a, for example, um, let me just a make a one. We'll just press enter and just make a one. Okay, so remember, as I make a bigger, it does this. It gets steeper and steeper and steeper. I could make my slider go even further. Watch what happens when I make a negative. Watch carefully. Look. It does some really cool patterns, huh? So it's not really in the syllabus, but I think it's really neat. There's some very interesting mathematics that happen with negative numbers here. But it's not in the syllabus, but I think it's kind of cool to see. So we're just making these graphs kind of freak out by making it negative. That's why I say we'll make it positive here. So this doesn't freak out. All right, we have something called logarithmic functions as well. And we're going to do a similar treatment, I think. So we'll say uh, f of x. You have to remember, though, what a log does. So let's say we do log base. I'll make it log base a of x. And I'm going to say very carefully, a has to be greater than 0. And we have to say a can't be 1. So let's take a look at what that's going to look like. Remember, what, by the way, what we do with logs? Remember, we have log base a of x. What does that mean? Let's just say we say it equals to y. Let's just pretend it was a, a y value here. We can rewrite this as a, an exponent. Remember, we can say a to the power of y equals x. So just so you know, this is actually the same thing. Just in case you didn't remember what to do about logs, you can write a log as an exponential by saying this to the power of this always equals this. So let me try to do a graph of this. I'll play around with a values and see what I get. So let me make, uh, maybe I'll say log base 2 of x and see what I get then. Let's just see what that looks like. I'll add on a new graph, and I'll say, what's log base yeah, 2 of x? Let's see what that does. All right, that gives me something like this. Do you notice this time it crosses through this point 1 here? That's log base 2 of x. And let me at the same time do log base 3 of x. We'll see what that looks like. Hey, look at that. It looks like this. And log base 4 of x, just to show you, log base 4 of x. It's going to look even more so like this. So let's try to do this drawing here. I'm going to attempt to do that. So let's see. We've got this magical point here that's always crossing at 1. And I've got my graphs here. My very first one is going to be something like... Uh, I'm just going to try to draw it something like this. Whoops, that was a very bad drawing. Something like... Something like that, maybe. Well, something like that. I don't think it was that steep. I'm actually a pretty bad artist for this. Something like that, let's just say. So it's log base 2 of x. But when I did log base 3 of x, it actually got steeper, right? It got something like, maybe like this one right here. Something like, something like that. Log base 3 of x. I have to be careful it doesn't cross this axis here, right? Something like that. And log base 4 of x, then it'll be something even steeper. Something like, I don't know. Did a really bad job on my ends there, but there we go. Something like that, maybe. This would be a log base 4 of x. You get the idea. Something like that. So I could keep playing around with these numbers and making them different. All right. What I could do now is consider this logarithmic function uh, f of x equals natural log of x. Because you remember what a natural log is. Remember, a natural log of x, same thing as saying log base e of x. So the question would be then, which of these, again, if I try to match them up, do you remember what log base e is? Well, e is roughly 2.72, isn't it? So what if I did log base 2.72? Let's see if that's going to work. Let's see if it's going to match it. So I'm going to, on the same time, graph uh, natural log of x here. That's this brown one. So what I'm going to do then is try to uh, figure out which of these other graphs here matches the brown one the best. And the one that's going to match it the best is going to be if I make it, um, I'll make it f2.8 here. I'm going to do log base uh, roughly 2.72, because right, that's log base e of x. I'm just going to try to see if I can get it to match. So watch carefully the brown graph. Whatever color this one comes up, let's see if it looks like it. And it really does. It matches it. It's getting going to be kind of a mess, though. <laughs> But uh, you get the idea here. So we've got this point right here for log base uh, log base e, which is what a natural log is. It pretty much matches somewhere between the 2 and the 3, so something like that here. So it's, I'll draw maybe just one different color. I'll make it like this, somewhere between the 2 and the 3. Like this. this is natural log of x, which is roughly equal to 
log base 2.72. Oops, but that's because e to the 1 is roughly 2.72. All right, so we've got some weird graphs here, but uh, that's what happens here. That's how we do them. I like this one. What can show you the weight of both a twig and a tree? A log scale. Get it? Because first of all, they're on different orders of magnitudes. You need a logarithmic scale, but get it? Because they're... Lo oh, God. I hate myself. So we have a logarithm as an inverse of an exponential. What do we mean by this? We're going to define some things here. If a is bigger than 0 and x is bigger than 0, we have a is not equal to 1. We're going to talk about log base a of x. And that's going to be the exponent to which a has to be raised to get x. Do you remember? Because... When we have something like log base ax equals y, remember I'm just trying to explain this again, that to do this I could rewrite it as an exponential. I can say a to the power of y gives you x. I'm essentially, I'm just explaining in words what I just did here. The exponent to which a must be raised to get x. That's what this, I just called it a y instead. See, I just, I just added the equals y. I didn't need it, but I sort of invented it there. So, I'm going to try to find the inverse of f of x equals log base a of x. Let's see if we can find that inverse. Remember how we do an inverse. To do an inverse, let's just see here. Let's remind ourselves what an inverse is. Inverse is f looks like this. That's the inverse. Remember what we do? If we want to do it mathematically, first we write, I'll write in steps here. First we write in uh, x and y form. Then we switch x and y. Then we solve for y. Let's see if we can do that here. That's going to be my inverse. So I'm going to attempt to do exactly this. Let's do it. So I'm going to write it as y equals log base a of x. That's my first step. Then I switch the x's and y's. So x equals log base a of y. Then I try to get y by itself. Now it's hard to do that, but I kind of can by using this idea here a to the power of x is going to be y in this case. That's going to be a to the power of x is going to equal y. So that I've just done it. So do you notice then what happens? This right here I can state then that this is the inverse. So the inverse f, you know, like this, inverse of x is going to be equal to a to the power of x. That's going to be my answer. That's my inverse. So do you notice then what happens? If I start off with f of x equals log base a of x, the inverse of it is going to be a to the x. And it turns out this one right here, its inverse is this, because the reversible process is here. So pro tip, just a nice easy, maybe a nice important thing to remember then, is that log base a of x and a to the x are inverses of each other. It's not super obvious. That's just what I wanted to show you. I don't think that's always very clear. It takes a bit of practice before you sort of get these. Now exponentials and logarithms, what do we do with these? We have a formula in your formula booklet. So let's look at this one. It goes a to the x. Mm, they say equals, it says a to the, e to the, sorry, x ln a. Uh, and we have a semicolon there, write it like this. Then it says log base a of a to the power of x. That is the same thing as x, which is the same thing as a to the power of log base a of x. And they tell you, don't forget, though, that a and x are greater than 0, and a is not equal to 1. Now, this looks crazy. They're just telling you some things that you could also show. I'll just show you some of them here. This is, again, in your formula booklet, which is nice. So, yes. Let's take a look at why some of these things might be the case. Look at this one here to the left. Let's just look at that one, maybe. Mm. So let's just look at it. So a to the x, let's say, equals e to the x ln a. Is that true? Well, let's attempt to just um, deal with this one. If I've got an e, what if I wanted to undo an e? Do you remember how I undo e to the power of something? I take the natural log of both sides. So I'm going to do natural log of both sides here. So let's do that. So natural log of a to the x equals natural log of e to the x ln a. And good news natural log and e, they undo each other. So that disappears. Uh, so essentially this thing just sort of falls down. Now natural log of uh, a to the power of x, if you remember your rules of logs, you can always take an exponent and put it in front. So that means I can say x ln a. Well, that's going to equal, in this case, this here drops off, and we end up with just x ln a. Hey, left hand side equals right hand side. So, ta-da, it's done. So that's sort of one of them just to show you.
We could do another one just for fun. We can try to work on this one right here. So let's work on that one. So log base a of a to the x. Let's see if it really does equal x. Well, do you remember how we write things with logs? We can always say the, the base to the power of this thing equals this thing. So let me just do it that way. So I'll say fine, then I've got a to the power of x equals, and then it equals this thing, which is a to the x. Hey, a to the x equals a to the x. Again, left-hand side equals right-hand side. Check. So this is sort of how we can deal with these things. So although they look complicated, we can use these sometimes, if you need to at least. These are some properties that we can use uh, in order to try to work with logs. Now, why in the world should you care about this? Well, there's lots of practical examples in real life where we use logarithms um, and exponentials, especially with scales. So we have this Richter scale, uh, which is a logarithmic scale that's for earthquakes. That's you know how powerful they are. We have uh, sound, which is in decibels. That's actually a logarithmic one. We use uh, logarithms and exponentials uh, in radioactivity all the time. So like we have an equation, for example, in physics, it goes like n equals n zero e to the minus uh, lambda t, for example, to tell us something about the half life of something. It tells us how many you know, um, atoms, for example, will be remaining at a certain time when you start off with a certain amount if it's radioactive. We've got lots of things with E's and natural logs. Uh, so these are, are actually used in real life. It just depends on you. I mean, you are listening to sound, so I mean, sound is something that's logarithmic. So understanding these does give you some inkling into how the world really works.